about 10 years ago, uh, Al Gore said that the, the South Pole would have uh, melted. And um, the, uh, and as you can see, the South Pole hasn't melted. And if I said something like that on the internet, I would have, no, you're not late, I'm early. Okay, I would be, they would be on me like stink on shit. Nobody even mentions it, that Al Gore's full of shit. You can't find anybody that'll say Al Gore's full of shit. And Al Gore's full of shit. Number two is, I don't think Al's ever been to the South Pole. Has anybody in here been to either pole? No, I didn't think so. I mean, I've asked that question not a million times. That would be an exaggeration. I exaggerate about a lot of things, by the way. I say I bench pressed 400 pounds. I only bench pressed 395. They forgot to put the fucking collars on. I said I used to weigh 300 pounds. I only used to weigh 287. I, all my heart, I tried to get up to 300 pounds. I couldn't get up to 300 pounds. There's certain things I graduate about, but they're not worth the shit. It doesn't mean anything. Okay? When I say the world is going down the motherfucking toilet, I'm not exaggerating about that. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here, you sorry, spineless cunts. But this is one of my faves. Uh, that isn't Al Gore, by the way, with the snow all over his face. But uh, the North Pole, or the North Pole, not South Pole, excuse me. The North Pole will be ice-free in the summer of 2013. Now, I was at, my wife and I were at the North Pole in 2015. Uh, we were at the South Pole in 2011. Um, and there we are, North and South Pole. There's been 11, arguably 12 expeditions to the poles. Ten of them are dead. You're looking at half of the other one. My wife and I, scientific expeditions. Yet everybody flaps their mouth about it. Nobody, you know how you see on some programs they have on the on right hand column they call uh, credentials. Uh, the guy, you know, Harvard MBA, he did this, he did that. These guys that flap their mouth about uh, um, climate change, which I call it, they call it global warming, nobody ever asks the credentials. You don't ask the credentials, or you don't want to know the credentials of the people of the other seminars you've been to. The podcasts you listen to. The books you read. Now, in the foreword of a book, now we all know people that write forwards of books, forwards, you know, the first two, three pages, that's, this guy's a genius, blah, blah, bullshit, bullshit. They write forwards for each other, Okay. A good portion of the time, I'm not saying they're being disingenuous on purpose, a good portion of the time, the forwards are inaccurate. The guy isn't a fucking genius. Yet you read the fucking books. Why don't you Google those people as much as you fucking Google me? Google me and trying to find information out. Two or three of you in this room came, decided to come to the seminar. As soon as you heard me, five minutes or ten minutes or two, two hours later, you signed up or you tried to sign up. There are people in this room that have researched me for five fucking years before you got your sorry, spineless, twat ass in a chair. Why don't you research the other guys, the other gals? Because they tell you it's easy. And even a sorry, spineless cunt like you or you can be a success, which is a fucking lie. You cannot, I'm not going to ask the question, how many of you, I'll ask it, but I don't want an answer. How many of you were told growing up, you can be anything you want, Sonny? What a load of shit. Now, I actually questioned it when I was growing up. And I wouldn't question anything my dad said because he'd knock my fucking teeth out. If he told me it was 41 days in July, by fucking God, when I went to mass, because I wanted to be a priest when I was a boy. I wanted to be a priest. I go and just, I pray and say, why did he tell me that? But I'm not going to tell him he's wrong because he'll fucking knock my teeth out. Stop, most of you should have had your fucking teeth knocked out. Now, if you knock the kid's teeth out, you go to jail. Somebody's got an iPhone, right? I said last night, how has your program worked out? You've been good to everybody in your life. You give them presents, you write them birthday cards and all the shit, right? Dude? How has it gotten you? How's your program worked out? 
It hasn't. You're still dirt poor or close to it. I've done none of the above. I believe President Trump doesn't give birthday cards. He doesn't say thank you. How's his program worked out? I'm, I'm, I'm positive Putin doesn't send birthday cards. He doesn't send motherfucking flowers to anybody. He doesn't say thank you, and he sure shit never says I'm sorry. How's his program worked out? Yet you've done all those things, and how's your motherfucking program worked out? Because you're pleasers. Do you think Putin and Trump are pleasers? Mm, I don't think so. Henry Ford, the first to pleaser, no. Elon Musk, no. Bill Gates, no. Warren Buffett, I can go down the list. There's one pleaser on that and I'll, during the break if somebody can get figure it out. They never have before. There's one pleaser on my influencers. And it's not Attila the Hun. It's not Genghis Khan, believe me. There's one pleaser on that board. One. I've been saying this for fucking years and taking a lot of shit. And all the big gurus, nobody says it except now, Kevin O'Leary, who I've never met in my whole fucking life. Well, I know him because he's got a bald head uh, and it shines and he should get more powder on his head. But other than that, I don't know him. Business is war. I go out there, I want to kill the competitors. I want to make their lives miserable. I want to steal their market share. I want them to fear me and I want everyone on the t my team thinking we're going to win. He's a star from Shark Tank. We all think that, but as far as I can tell, O'Leary and I are the only two saying it. He's ruthless. And the only, I'm jealous because he spoke at my alma mater here recently in the last few months. And my alma mater won't even talk to me. But all the guys you're going to see, and we're going to talk about the founder from last night. And it gets worse. Every night you're going to see a movie about somebody that's a bigger asshole that has made billions. And compare that to your program. How's your fucking program working out? Well, we all know how your program's working out. When I, and I just got an email from my cousin, uh, one of my two favorite cousins, who she just turned 80. Um, and she uh, was four, a little more than four years older than I, I was. And the, um, uh, she was an educator. She was a principal uh, of a, a school. Uh, and um, the, uh, it made me think about a lot of the things that uh, we did when we were growing up, or didn't do, I should say. Um, but when I was growing up and my father was tough on me, beating me, his brother, one of his brothers and one of his sisters Used to, well, he uh, used to ask him, aren't you being too harsh on Dan? And, and Dad said words to the effect. Uh, I'm not, this isn't a, a direct paraphrase. Well, how is your program working out with your crack whore daughter? And how's your program working out with your fucking lazy, uh, incarcerated son? And they were easy on them. And so I asked the question, how's your program working out? Well, we know how it's working out because you're here. Now, a couple of you just found me and you're, you know, but I understand that. But for the most part, you, you tried all kinds of other shit. I, we, don't, we took the section out of the uh, information that you've provided me so far. We took a section out a long time ago to tell me about the other people that you've gone to see, what you've learned or didn't learn. I, we took that sec section out because that was as worthless as toilet paper. Because you deluded yourself into thinking you actually learned something. And you didn't. Or in this part of the world, you didn't. This is Kevin. Kevin also says, working 24 hours a day isn't enough anymore. You have to be willing to sacrifice everything to be successful, including your personal life, your family life, maybe more. If you think it's any less, they're wrong and they will fail. Does that sound fucking familiar? And he only just recently came out with this in the last few months. They all think it, but they're trying to paint their legacy. Apparently, Mr. O'Leary doesn't give a fuck about his legacy. They're all trying to paint a different picture of themselves to be remembered by. I want to be remembered by being a ruthless cocksucker that took no fucking prisoners, 
they'd rip their head off and shit down their neck. And that's pretty difficult because, you know, after you rip their neck off, you have real strong thighs to keep their body upright. So when you, and you got to lean forward to take a dump. And I mean, it's fucking hard. It ain't easy. Most of you, your legs aren't strong enough. And in your reports, you're going to start giving me, I, when I say you exercise, and I want to know what you exercise. And some of you guys work out two, three, four hours a day, and I look at you. What the fuck? What are you working out? What are you doing? How can you possibly be working two, three, and look like you look? Fucking pencil neck, fucking spineless twats. Now, the ones I believe is, oh, I did uh, two hours fresh air walking. I I don't know exactly what that means. I believe it means walking in the park or something like walking on the beach. And you can't hardly get fresh air because of the fucking, uh, anyway. That I believe because he looks like a pencil neck piece of shit. Now, occasionally, we, last seminar, we had some, guys, some beefy guys, you know, some guys with some fucking muscles. And um, they, they, they said they worked out 20 minutes. The guy that was sitting next to him worked out two hours, and it's like uh, uh, comparing a pencil to a loaf of bread. People ask me all the time, why are you so tough? Did you learn that? I said, no, it's just dealing with the truth all the time. In business, you've got to deal with the truth. You can't make up stuff. It just happens to you. Reality always comes and bites you in the eye. So why not deal with it from day one? Everybody calls me the mean shark and shark. That's not true. I'm the only shark that tells the truth. In money, there's just black and white. Either you make it or you lose it. So you might as well deal with the truth right from the get-go. If you're doing something that's going to go bankrupt, why not deal with it now? And start something else that maybe will be successful. The truth is what's important, not the fake side of things, because you're always telling yourself things are going to work out, but in reality, sometimes they don't. Deal with it, get over it, pick yourself up off the floor, and start again. That's what entrepreneurship is all about. You know, when I see an idea I really hate and I know it's going to fail, I often say, take that idea behind the barn and shoot it. I want to be graphic about it. It's like old yellow. You've got rabies, your idea's going to die. You might as well kill it and be merciful and go do something else. Taking it behind the barn and shooting it is the right thing to do. I've got all kinds of people working for me, and I always tell them the same story. Love is like business. Marriage is like business. And here's what I mean. When you first fall in love and you fall in trust with somebody, it's a magical time. You go into that relationship fully in lockstep with each other because you trust each other. Then that time comes, as it often does in relationships years later, when somebody breaks that trust. Now, what do you do with it? Do you lie to your partner or do you come out and tell the truth? Because the truth always comes out. And when it happens, the first time you cheat in love or in business, you lose 50% of the equity of that relationship forever. You can never get it back. You may keep the relationship, but it'll never be the same. Remember that when you're cheating. 50% gone forever. With me, you lose 100%. You lie to me once, you fudge the truth, you're through. You're through. And you don't fall in love, you fall in lust. But he's the only guy that I know, currently, I took, I'm taking a lot of heat for posting O'Leary stuff. I'm taking more heat about this. The Chinese father who is a spineless cunt at the Grand Canyon, for those of you that saw it on my uh, social media, at the Grand Canyon they have a, a plexiglass kind of bridge, in, infinity bridge, that goes out over the Grand Canyon and uh, you're standing over the 7,000 feet, whatever it is, and it's, it's plexiglass. And, uh, you know, it hasn't broken. Chinese built it, so I, 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 I'll leave it at that. But... Uh, we were there, uh, my wife and I, a couple years ago, and um, there was a, a Chinese couple with a three and a five or a seven and a, a six-year-old kid, and um, the father was so uh, scared he couldn't go off over the plexiglass thing. He went. So you go out over there, and then on the way back, 
he was waiting for the kids at the, at the end. So they went out on, over the Grand Canyon, came back, and Sally and I were watching the kids. And the, um, he went like this to um, hug the kids when they came back. The kids were so embarrassed, they walked by their father and wouldn't hug him. Those kids will never be the same the rest of their fucking life. Everybody in this goddamn room has that kind of experience with one of their parents. If not both. You never forget. What are those kids going to think of their father as a role model 10 years from now? 15 years from now. 20 years from now. When he's lying on his deathbed. We had people actually on YouTube come back to me and say, well, you're a bad person, Mr. Pena, for making fun of that man that has no balls. And they leave out the fact, the fact that they probably ruined their children. Everybody in this fucking room has a parent that either fucked them or double fucked them. You're here because of your parents. Most of you directly, some of you indirectly. This is a deathbed, deathbed experience. A guy was saved by QLA from dying. He decided not to die. Hit by a car. And I'll just, you're going to get this. He says, uh, the car was going 45 miles an hour. Blah, 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 uh, a tie, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, my, my Maui Thai didn't kick in. Uh, I was going to uh, have to f fight him. He thought uh, if he was going to live. But he says, I heard you saying to me, don't be such a cunt. Uh, uh, you, you're either got to be dead in a coma not to go forward. Be a, don't be a bitch. And that's all he thought about. He didn't think about his little daughter. Didn't think about his fucking mother. Didn't think about his kid. Thought about me. And his life was saved. This is a cult. That's no bullshit. You either want to be rich or poor. That's the cult. You made the initial decision, you're here. All of you won't be here three months from now. We have a 60% dropout rate. And I stopped counting at 60 because I didn't want it to be 96%. Because, you know, but now I know if I said 100% of you are going to fail, we'd still sell out. Because I'm the only game in town. I'm the only choice that you have. It's either that or this. And when you put it up, metaphorically speaking, because I would never remember, you stick it up so you scrape the, the skin on the roof of your mouth to make sure it's lodged in there good. And then you pull, and you got you to lock of it, load it, and then the top of your head will be gone. Most of you should have rolled down the uh, fat mama's leg. You've all heard me say that, right? And every, almost everybody in this room, your mother was a pig when she was pregnant and she gave birth to you. She gained 40, 50, 60, 80, 90, 100 pounds. Now the seminar. Founder, you saw the founder last night, you saw my introduction, you saw Tyson, right? Let's talk about Tyson first. What's the takeaway about Mike and his mentor? Christ saved his life. Pardon? He saved his life. Yes? Well, arguably, I'm saving your life. What else? Confidence. Mike has a lot of potential, but without the guidance of cars, he's simply going to go anywhere in life. What else? Discipline. Pardon? Discipline. We're naming things all you don't have so far, right? You know, success leaves clues, you fucking spineless cunts. What else, sir? No emotion. Emotional detachment. No emotion. What else? You taught him to never give up. There's only two guarantees in the seminar. Two. If you stop swinging at the plate, I guarantee you won't hit the fucking ball. I guarantee, that's a guarantee. Okay. I, I'm waiting to give you the next guarantee later. What else about Mike? 
Never give up. Because uh, create a plan to go from A to B, obviously the heavyweight title. Yeah, well, I mean, the, 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 everybody's got a plan until you punch him in the face. And when we, you know, for those of you that are going to participate in the boxing tomorrow, uh, the, uh, we're going on. We're, we're keeping the go, cat. Um, the, um, we've had people that have taken boxing lessons to come and participate in the, what we're going to do tomorrow. They get knocked out, <laughs> which I find it very funny. And uh, they paid some fucking moron, and I don't know what level of moron he was, and he might have been a good boxing coach, but you can only, uh, you only got what you got to deal with, right? Most of you are like a mealy mouth cunts, spineless cunts that couldn't fight your way out of a wet paper bag. Most of you. Most people that come to the seminar are. And to pay somebody to learn how to box and then get fucking knocked out in the first 15, 20 seconds, we don't show everything on YouTube. And they cleaned up the blood from the fucking, and I didn't want them to clean up the blood. But my housekeeping, you know, like little slaves cleaning up the fucking blood. I want you to see the fucking blood when you get in there. But now it's all, you can see the kind of the stains. What else about Mike? Limitless as a child, he was taught by his mentor. Yes, sir. He doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Your program being pleasers, and women are the bi bi biggest pleasers, unfortunately. And I, I could give a whole fucking month-long seminar on that. All the obvious, but I'm not going to. You were raised to be pleasers. Now, when you went off to grammar school, for those of you that remember, or for those of you that have sent your kids off to uh, kindergarten, right? And self-esteem is built the first seven or eight years. What do, you tell, what do you tell the kids and what did probably your parents tell you? Be good, don't make trouble, blah, blah, share your toys and all that shit, right? Not. And now, fast forward 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 years later, now look at you. What did sharing your toys get you in life? Fuck all. What did not standing out, keeping your head down, get you in life? Fuck all. What else about Mike? We had, you yes, sir. Can intimidate your opponent. Correct. You will have the banks and the motivated sellers on their back foot. Does everybody understand that? Off balance, on their back foot, if you follow the scripts. But a lot of you aren't going to follow the scripts and the templates and the processes and the procedures and the systems. Why? Because you've engaged in self-sabotaging activities all your miserable lives and you don't really deserve. You scraped up the money somehow to get here, but you don't really believe you deserve to be successful. So you won't follow the motherfucking scripts. Josh Kim... Today after lunch is going to tell you the exact words he uses. The exact fucking words verbatim. And you won't use them. You're going to get a template. And you won't use it. Some of you will use the excuse because you can't speak English. And you got to translate it into your fucking miserable language. Not. It translates good enough. You saw the backward bicycle, right? That's my favorite of all the ones you're going to see. For those of you that are engineers, have advanced degrees, mathematicians, accountants, lawyers, uh, I don't think we have, no medical doctors, uh, um, you learn things in a fact pattern. And QLA is a lot of things, but it's not taught in a fact pattern. Because a lot of things, you go from 1 to 7 to 28 to 300 to 4 million. That's not a fact pattern. That's called random. And most of you can't effectively use random analysis because it takes you out of your comfort zone from the first microsecond. The guys and gals that are the most successful here are the guys and gals that learn how to be in a state of total discomfort. Learn being comfortable being uncomfortable. And the reason why we have so many successful kids 
is because they have less bags. Now, in closing thing before we go off YouTube, just say your first name, the country you're from, and your age. Okay? Uh, Glenn Carlson, UK, 29. Clement Globoknik, uh, Slovenia, 37. Josh, Australia, 33. Dominic, Austria, 24. Jason, Canada, 46. Tony, Canada, 49. Eric, Galicia, Miami, Florida, 34. Alex, Bajon, 25. Jacob, Atlanta, Georgia, 20. Jim, Canada, 50. Tom, Australia, 30. Ian, USA, 32. Ishan, Suriname, 37. Jose, uh, Portugal, 46. Kevin Dillon, Singapore, 36. Lava, Bulgaria, 45. Danai, 32. Belgium, Lydia, Luxembourg. David, Spain, 31. Brian Rosalady, 28. Qatar. Anabelda Rao, Singapore, 23. Surya, US, 22. Kenji, 26. Qatar. Jason, Australia, 36. Diego, USA, 18. It could be United Nations. Every place that, uh, the, uh, that you mentioned, with, uh, this is easily done. One is a little more difficult. One is a little more difficult. The two places that it's really hard to implement QLA are Russia and the Ukraine. Russia and the Ukraine. Although we're doing it, we're doing it there, but it's, you've got to take some other things in, in, into account. Okay, YouTube, we'll see you tomorrow. Or not tomorrow, we'll see you later. Thank you.